Hello and welcome to another exclusive Wildfoot Travel interview. Today I have the distinct pleasure of chatting with Nick Dyer, world-renowned wildlife photographer, author and conservationist. Nick's passion for wildlife photography started as a young boy growing up in Kenya. After leaving Kenya, he worked in London as a fund manager before taking an extended career break to travel every roadless desert in Australia in his Land Cruiser. Following that, Nick went on to run a successful marketing business until in 2012, Africa came calling again. And Nick took the opportunity to follow his dream of becoming a full-time wildlife photographer. Since then, Nick has been exploring and photographing Eastern and Southern Africa, developing a deeper insight for its wildlife and conservation. In 2014, Nick met Peter Blinston, head of Painted Dog Conservation. Together, they went on to set up the Painted Wolf Foundation, an organisation designed to raise awareness and support for Africa's wild dogs. So with the introduction out of the way, it's over to Nick. Nick, can you hear me? Hi Dave, can hear you loud and clear and great to be talking to you on this rather gorgeous sunny day in Harare. Nick, I'll get straight on with the questions if it's alright with you and uh, if you can hear seagulls in the background I apologise, it's one of the drawbacks of living by the ocean. Uh, question number one Nick, uh, at what point did you become so interested in wild dogs specifically? And what is it that attracts you to this particular species? It's great to be hearing seagulls. Um, it's not something I hear much of in this landlocked, locked down Zimbabwe at the moment, although there's plenty of good bird life in my garden. Um, so the, the question, what first attracted me to wild dogs? I mean, as you, as you pointed out that um, I was gave up my life in England and to follow my dream to become a wildlife photographer. And I did that for several years. And then um, I discovered Manor Pools, uh, which is an amazing park in the north of uh, Zimbabwe on the southern shores of the Zambezi River. And I went there first in 2013. And I found, you know, they had a lot of dogs and I sort of like started photographing them, but was also photographing lions and elephants and everything else. And then a very, very kind guide said to me, would you like to follow me and my guests? Um, I pointed out the dogs to him. I said, look, they're over there. And he said, well, follow me. They're going to go hunting. We'll follow them on the hunt. And it was the most exciting um, experience I've ever had. Um, they flushed out a herd of impala. They were flying everywhere. I had dogs running past my legs. I had impala almost knocking me over. And that suddenly intrigued me into these incredible creatures. It was absolutely fantastic. And over the years since then, I just got to know them um, better and better. And they are the most amazing creatures, not just to photograph, but just to be with. They are incredibly social, they're incredibly fun, they play with each other. They are Africa's most efficient um, hunter, uh, where 80% of their uh, hunts actually end in a kill. Um, but, you know, most of all, they're just, they're just beautiful creatures, not only to look at, but actually just to see them run around, play with each other, jump and bite with each other. Um, and just be as a family group. They're absolutely enchanting. Question number two then, Nick. You've spent many seasons following the painted walls of Manor Pools. What is it about this particular location that makes it such a good place to study and observe wild dogs? Yeah, Manor Pools is an exceptional place and almost like a second home to me. Um, what makes it special? I mean, it's it's in, got incredibly varied landscape. It's on the 
the banks of the, the southern banks, of the southern shores of the Zambezi River, which is a magnificent river. It's got a huge open flood, flood plain with beautiful trees. Um, it's got thick, thick jess, what we call jess, which is like almost jungle-like, where the only way to get through is walking down really tight uh, elephant tracks, um, never knowing what sh what's going to jump out at you. But it's, um, I mean, it's incredibly beautiful and, and, and has great um dog populations um and but the the main thing to me what makes it so attractive it's the only park in africa that you're allowed to walk by yourself um, at your own risk of course but um that allows from a photographic point of view some incredible uh, experiences but it also makes for an incredible um is incredible personal um, relationship you develop with the animals because they're not seeing you in a game viewer they're actually seeing where they don't all they see is a car but they actually see you in foot so for me as a photographer I actually connect and connect with the animals that I'm actually photographing um, and that to me is, is 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 very special it's more than just taking the picture it's actually forming a connection and um, so apart from being beautiful that that personal relationship you develop with the or the subject you're taking the animals especially the dogs who are no you know not worrying you and you're not worrying them you always have to treat the animals with the deepest respect you're in their space but it allows for just a lovely relationship and a lovely way to take photography and that brings us on very nicely nick to my third question the bbc's Dynasty's TV show was an absolute smash hit. And since then, you've gone on to co-author an outstanding coffee table book on the same pack of dogs. So what is it that makes that pack of dogs so special? So Manor had, in that time when the BBC was filming, three packs. The Vundu, which is run by Tate, the alpha female. Um, the Nyakasanga, which was run by Black Tip, both of them featured heavily in the in the in their film, um, and Tammy, who was uh, another daughter of Tate. Black Tip was the other one, um, and um, I suppose I started following them in two thousand and thirteen, and then the BBC came in in. 2015 were there for two years filming their dynasties film and I've been virtually there following them ever since and um, I guess what's so special about them is they're probably like all dogs anywhere else in Africa but what intrigues me so much about them is I got to know them and they I'm pretty sure knew me you know I mean your dog recognizes who you are um, and those packs sort of like accepted me, which was really quite special. Um, and I got to know them not just as a pack, but as individuals. So, I mean, not just the alpha females of Tate, Blacktiff and Tammy, but also, you know, there were other amazing characters in there. There was um, a male, big male called uh, Patrick. Um, and he was just like and behaved like one of these kindly headmasters, always there gently disciplining the pups or regurgitating for them but, but absolutely adored them there were other characters like Triss who was this lovely female little yearling um, who's disappeared now I haven't seen her for years but we me and a friend of mine Henry Bandura who guided the BBC we nicknamed her Doc because whenever a dog was wounded in a in a, in a fight with the you know with a baboon or whatever the the um she would come and while they were resting she would lick the wounds and she did that regularly to any wounded dog so what made them so special to me was they became like an extended family um, i knew them i loved being with them and you know they were the subject of my book because i just had to write about them they were they were just they were just a special family and they continue to this day um you know i'm still following them the daughters the offsprings uh, of of those great alpha females that were featured in dynasties so yeah they're still very special very special indeed question number four then nick you were an award winner in the prestigious 2018 
Wildlife Photographer of the Year awards. Could you introduce the winning image and give us a little more information about it? Yeah, getting into the, you know, becoming an award winner in the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition was, yeah, I was so chuffed about that. That was a real, you know, I was really pleased. Um, the That image um, entitled The Head of the Game, um, I captured, it was a couple of puppies playing, uh, a couple of black tips puppies. So to give a background, Mana Pools is the only place in Africa where wild dogs have been seen to predate on baboons. And following them all this time, they started doing this in about 2015, uh, no, 2014, I think was the first time I saw it. Um, and the boo baboons didn't really know what happened, what, what hit them. It was like, wow, incredible. Um, and then one morning I'd followed the dogs probably for several kilometers on foot um at a nice respectful distance and they killed this baboon i actually missed the kill um because they can run much faster than i can move so they killed this baboon and i arrived there and the, they let the pups eat first that just shows you one of the lovely things about the dogs is that you know it's not like lions where the male just gobbles up everything until he can't move he's so full um the the the, the wild dogs make sure that the um, that the pups eat first and they get their full be fill before they even start to eat. So the pups ate the baboon and then afterwards they just started this amazing game of, I guess, rugby, I think, where they were chasing each other, um, tackling and scrumming and rucking and it was just absolutely fantastic. And the ball they were using was the actual severed head of the baboon, which was really quite quite grim um but um but you know it was you know to see a fellow primate <laughs> being uh, treated like that but what was really fantastic was just the fun that they were all having and the little chap at front in the in the front of that photograph you know actually came up to me i was lying flat on my ground uh, on the ground the pack was uh, uh, in uh, you know in front of me and this little little um little pup came up with a head in its mouth and said, do you want to join in? It was like, no, thanks. You, you carry on and kill, you know, knock yourselves out. But it was, yeah, a lovely, lovely to A, capture that experience and B, to enjoy the experience with the Natural History Museum. And, um, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was great. Um, lovely photograph. Here's a question, Nick, that's probably on uh, a lot of our viewers' minds. And that is, have you ever been attacked by a wild dogs or have you ever felt threatened by wild dogs? Uh, have I been threatened by them? Um, no, I mean, I've had them come up to me, you know, the, when I'm lying on the ground, I, I love to get below them to photograph them. And I've often had, when I'm there by myself, you know, the, the dogs come up and, you know, almost sniff my ear. And they're quite skittish, really. They, but they, you know, you, and you don't encourage them to do that, but they so generally do. Um, interestingly, there's been no recorded case ever of a wild dog killing a human being or even attacking a human being. I think there was, I think it was in Pittsburgh Zoo several years ago um, that um, a child unfortunately fell into um, into the cage or the pit where the where the dogs were living, and unfortunately he did not survive. Um, but in the wild, it's, there's no there's no recorded um, cases of any attacks. Funnily enough, I have actually, because of the dogs, um, um, been attacked by a lion. I was photographing black tips pack, and they had just made a kill, and they were eating, go, tucking into this impala, and three lions charged in. And the dogs just said, I'm out of here, bye Nick. And they just gapped it and left me with these two females and one sub-adult male, which uh, was pretty scary because my car was probably about two kilometers away. Um, but um, I just basically shouted at the female who started coming forward to stop back off very loudly. Um, I was very, very nervous. I had a bear banger which sets off a loud bang, which can scare them, but it doesn't always work and I didn't really want to do it. 
And then I just started talking to them, to, to the lions, just sort of like calming them down, you know, just saying it's okay, because, you know, it's, I was here first and we're fine, you know, no harm. And um, because they were as shocked to see me as I certainly was to see them. Um, and then after about eight minutes, they'd calmed down and I gradually just backed off. But to me, it was one of the most frightening and scary moments. So from lions, yeah, they, they certainly can give you a fright. But in terms of the dogs, no, I, I you know, as yet, uh, touch wood, have never felt threatened by them. The decline of this species is well documented, Nick. Uh, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there are around six and a half thousand left in the world. Um, could you give us any more information about why this decline is taking place and whether or not wild dogs pose a threat to humans at all. So as you rightly say, Dave, there's there's only six and a half thousand wild dogs, you know, left in Africa. Um, and to put this into context, go back a hundred years and there were 500,000 uh, wild dogs in Africa. So they are you know, almost just 1% of their former, pop former population. And um, so what caused this? I mean, effectively, their threat to wildlife as Europeans, colonialists came to Africa, set up their European farming practices. They sort of saw the wild dog as a, a big threat and as um, and effectively just treated them as vermin. Um, it, it was so bad that in 1915, the colonial government in Rhodesia, um, which is now Zimbabwe, gave a reward of, I think it was five shillings for every tail you actually took in. And that, you know, that reward increased. So you were given a reward for killing a wild dog. And I believe it was the only, part, only animal in Kruger that you were actually allowed to shoot when visiting. Uh, as a tourist. So, you know, they were just completely persecuted and their numbers went into massive decline. Um, in my book, I went to the Zimbabwean archives and it was interesting to see just how farmers' journals had endless um, recommendations on how to, how to actually kill a wild dog you know, from running them over with a car, from capturing the puppies and waiting for the adults to come back. I mean, it was utter carnage and utter cruelty. Um, and although they are now a protected species, those awards were being paid up right up until I think 1978. Um, and although they are now a, a, a protected species, they are still subject to persecution. A lot of farmers are still illegally killing them, um, but also communities that are very poor um, are, you know, um, and hungry are putting out snares to capture, um, um, you know, uh, bucks and impala and so forth. And the unfortunate thing is that so many dogs that follow these animal trails where the snares are laid get caught and die. Um, and then they also um, suffer from disease, from rabies, distemper, which is caused by, um, which they catch off our domestic dogs. Um, and then there's road kills. Um, and then they have their natural predators, lions, hyenas, um, you know, so they are really um, not only low in numbers, six and a half thousand, but continue to this day under huge pressure. Um, and that's what led uh, me to set up the Painted Wolf Foundation with P Peter Blinston and Diane Skinner. And what we're trying to do is to raise the awareness, because not many people even know that these incredible animals exist. Um, so we're trying to raise their awareness in the West. Yeah, And our objective is to put them onto the top table of conservation, along with the elephants, where there's 450,000 lions, 30,000 rhinos, 25,000, I think, uh, with the dogs at six and a half thousand. So we want them on the top table. It's not that they are more important than elephant or rhino, but we want them there recognized that they need conserving. The other thing we're trying to do at the Painted Wall Foundation is to support those organizations on the ground. So we are looking at ways, we're talking with all the organizations across Africa on how best we can do that to see a sustainable recovery 
in this incredible creature. Aside from all these other commitments and achievements, Nick, you're also an expert wild dog guide and you have already released your dates for some small group tours in 2021, which I believe focus on uh, Manipools in Zimbabwe. Now, the details are on the Wildfoot Travel websites and I assume there are still some places available. Um, so can you give us a little more information about what our viewers could expect to experience on one of these trips and what makes them so, so special? So um, to know them is to love them. And, um, you know, I believe that if the wild dogs are going to survive, then, then they need to increase a fan base. Um, so I want, as part of my conservation efforts, to really be a conduit to that and take people to see these, you know, incredible creatures in the same way that I have experienced them. Um, so we do that uh, in Manor Pools. I have partnered with an amazing group called Africa Bush Camps, um, who not only have three amazing camps in Manor Pools, very different, but really cool. Um, and some amazing guides like Henry Bandura, who guided uh, the BBC um, around uh, Mount Pools when they were filming Dynasties. And we've teamed up and we just put on a very special painted wolf safari. So we're up first thing in the morning uh, before it's light and we start tracking them um, and start looking for them. Once we find the sort of like their spore, which could be footprints um, or some very, or, or see some very startled worry, worrying impala, um, we generally get out of the vehicle. Um, and there we are, you know, at a respectful distance. Um, we will be with them, photographing them. Photography is a very key uh, element of my um, safaris. Um, I enjoy working with people to show them how to get the best out of their time in Africa in terms of what photographs they actually get. Um, so, I mean, these, these safaris are, you know, the predominant thing is let's find the dogs, let's photograph them. Um, but also Manipals has got a lot more than the dogs. So I don't try and make it all we're going to do is dogs. I work with my guests. I limit the numbers to six people. Um, and, um, and, you know, so we go and see these amazing elephants like Boswell, who um, stands on his on his back legs to pull down the branches uh, from the albedo trees. Um, there's amazing prides of lion um, that, you know, it, during the day it's, it's quite safe and with an experienced guide to walk up to, um, watch them feeding. Um, you know, there's, there's beautiful bird life on the pools. Mana pools means four pools and there's stunning pools, you know, to sit and take photog uh, to do photography by. Um, you know, there really is just the most incredible um, diversity of wildlife. And so it's, yeah, wild dogs are at the core of it. But at the same time, there's, uh, sorry, there's my dog, Snowy. Um, she's not wild, she's just a normal dog. Um, so yeah, so, 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 so photography is at the core of it. Wild dogs are at the core of it. Let, uh, you know, allow me to t explain to people all ab about them and um, just how wonderful they are to actually experiencing them, sitting with them, being with them, and learning about them and the conservation side. Uh, on the conservation side, then um, always that's important. Tourism contribute to enormous amounts to, con uh, to conservation, especially in these times of COVID. Um, and so, um, so, you know, a meaningful donation is given to the Painted Wolf Foundation um, so that it continue its work. Um, so, you know, really encouraging the people who come on safari to, to be, become involved in the conservation of these incredible creatures. Well, thanks for talking to us today, Nick. And, and I'd like to wrap up with one final question. And it's a question that we ask many of our guests uh, in these interviews. And that is simply having had such an incredible career, achieved so much, seen so much and done so much. What comes next for Nick Dyer? 
<laughs> so if you if you had asked me at the end of last year, I would have said, "What's next?" There's a bloody good rest. I was with book launches and lots of talking tours and everything. I was absolutely exhausted. But COVID has obviously given us all a quite an enforced uh, rest and has recharged my batteries quite a lot. So um, what I'm looking forward to is becoming um, to really focusing much more. And I am at the moment focusing much more on the Painted Wolf Foundation. Um, we're really trying to see whether we can get a, a powerful recovery fund off the ground. Uh, Diane Skinner, our executive director, has been speaking to all the uh painted dog wild dog painted wolf organizations across the entire africa um and really you know on a to seeing where collaboration where synergies may actually you know be very worthwhile to to, to capitalize on um the other thing that i'm looking forward to is i'm not sure if it's going to happen this year but getting back in the bush um i've been fortunate that during lockdown i've had special permission to go to Mana to check on the dogs there and record certain activities that painted dog conservation are doing. Um, but um, I can't wait to actually have guests again and take them and show them these, you know, incredible creatures and what's actually happening to them. Um, you know, um, so whether that can happen this year, I'm not sure. Um, you know, if not, I've got a lot of trips for next year. And, you know, hopefully some people are seeing would like to join me for those in October. Um, and then um, the um, my, I guess, entrepreneurial itch just is dying for a scratch at the moment. And so I'm looking to set up an organization. Um, it's a bit early to start talking about what that actually going to do. But needless to say that other the um, in as a difference to what I was doing before, um, this is going to have a certain um, conservation edge to it, and it's really trying to explore how um, how a you know business can actually benefit conservation, and that to me is 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 pretty important, and I think it's going to be increasingly important going forward. Um, given the you know the real challenging circumstances that COVID is is wreaking on um, Africa, and you know and the parks institutions like Zim Parks, and you know and the conservation organisations, so they really need a lot of us and all our efforts to get behind them, um, so that we can actually hope to hopefully get through the COVID and the recession that looks like is going to come. So the future, I think, is, you know, it's quite exciting. It's going to be quite full. I feel recharged and enthusiastic and really enjoying the diverse dog-centered life that I seem to have created for myself. Nick, thanks so much for chatting to us today. It's been a real pleasure. Um, we wish you good luck with the book, good luck with the foundation, and good luck with those small group tours for 2021. It'd be great to see you over here uh, sometime, um, although it's unlikely to be too soon. Um, so until then, it's uh, thank you again from us all here at Wildfoot Travel, and we wish you safe travels and good luck in the future. Dave, thanks very much. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Um, thanks for really intelligent and relevant questions that you know I love answering. And um, yeah, um, I, I, please come out and visit what we're doing out here. Um, you know, it is fantastic. And um, yeah, but enjoy your t summer in England and your life by the sea, which I have to say, as much as I love the park, I'm quite envious of. Thanks very much. <laughs>